Hello guys, once again it's Matt and today we have another video. Let's thank our members Invictus, Crazy Blue Cuts, um, our Patreons, Interceptor, Richardson, Danny Cage, Rupert. Thank you all the members, all the Patreons and let's get into it. So today we're going to talk a little bit about the generations of aircraft, you know. Uh, generations of aircraft that are actually used um, a lot, especially in Western media and uh, internet in general, to just kind of classify, uh, classify some some aircraft, basically, the jet aircraft, right? So, we have the first gen, second gen, third, fourth, fifth, and in the future we will be, uh, be in the sixth. But uh, I wanted to say uh, what they are a little bit more and um, why they are kind of not the greatest thing ever um, and why they have to be used correctly. Um, and also... Um, why they're really re ir irrelevant basically so but don't get me wrong you know i, I still will use the um these uh generations of aircraft you know i still use the fourth generation aircraft i'm talking about uh, a lot about fourth generation aircraft coming to war thunder generally in the in the last videos that i did um so yeah but still it's a more generic way okay so let's start on what it is it's basically a way to identify or classify aircraft, uh, jet aircraft, uh, in a way that it will be easy to know if an aircraft is, it has some sort of performance, you know? So we would put it in a box, basically, and in that box you would have uh, many, many other aircrafts like it, you know? And uh, in that manner you can have an idea on what the performance of the aircraft itself would be like. You know, so uh, yeah, we have normally in the West, we have these generations considered, you know, for example, the fourth generation would be the MiG-29s, F-14s, F-15s. And then sometimes we use um, 4.5 generations, which which would be the MiG-35, Su-35, Su-30, the Super Hornet, the Rafale, the Typhoon, aircraft from the 90s and early 2000s. Um, also, it can be seen as the 4 plus generation, the Super Hornet and the Su 30, Rafale, and stuff like that, and 4 plus uh, plus, the latest variants of the MiG 35, Su 35, you know, um, aircraft like that. Uh, obviously, the fifth generation being the F 22, F 35, J 20, Su 57, aircraft like that, okay? Uh, of course, the third generation would be the MiG 23s, MiG 21s. So, yeah, it's second, the F-86, MiG-15s. And then the first generation would be the World War II ones, like the 262 or late uh, 40 ones, like the MiG-9, for example. So, so, yeah, it's a way to just identify and put an aircraft on a box, fill it with other aircraft, which has have the same kind of performance of it, uh, and then you can actually compare to it or at least have a, an idea. So if you're talking about an aircraft, if I say that it is a fourth generation aircraft, you will already think of aircraft like the F-15, the MiG-29, you know, you will think about like that. If I say, for example, um, a fifth generation aircraft like the FC-31, I think it's supposed to be a, a fifth generation aircraft in the future, the Korean one, right? Um, you already know that it is more comparable to the F-22, F-35 uh, than for the F-18, for example, you know? So, uh, it is just that. It's a generic way to put aircraft in boxes so that you can actually compare them to each other or to have an idea of an aircraft performance, okay? It is very generic, okay? It has two problems. Uh, the first problem is the holes that it has. Obviously, First of all, we have many holes. Uh, for example, I always say about the vegan. It's one that has many problems uh, because it is more advanced than a third generation aircraft normally, you know. But then it's way inferior, or not way inferior, but it is inferior to a fourth generation one. A MiG-23 MLD, for example, it's the same principle. It is way more modern than a MiG-21 that it is considered a third generation as well, depending on the source. But also, it is inferior to a MiG-29. So, 
And you have many, many examples like that, you know, um, late F4s and stuff like that. The MiG-25 is a weird one. Attacker aircraft such as the Tornado, for example, can be considered a fourth generation aircraft. But not attacker, but uh, interdictor bombers, you know. Um, but it is not at the same time, depending on the version and stuff like that. Su-24, Su-25, for example. I mean, what what is that? A third generation aircraft? I mean, normally it's used for fighters, but... So there's no designation for attackers and stuff like that. So it is just weird, okay? It is just weird because it has many, many holes. So uh, the idea behind it is just to be generic AF, you know? It's very generic. Because if you have a, a complexity to an aircraft like the Vegan has, but it is still a performance of a third generation. So the Vegan, for example, it has a radar comparable to a radar of a fourth generation, early fourth generation aircraft. So it's just that, guys. It's a box that you try to put an aircraft in and to have a, a general way, a generic way to deal with classification. It's just that people on the internet and on media, especially on TV, or even in movies, right? Uh, you see a lot of, in Top Gun, for example, you see a lot of fifth generation, fifth generation, stuff like that. And people tend to use this uh, generation kind of situation out of these generic boxes that you put aircraft in, okay? So, yeah, this is the main problem with the generation. Um, another one that I think it's even bigger, that it's just... I mean, that's just a completely... It makes the, the generation kind of completely useless, depending on, on where you are and what you're talking about. Because every single author, every single writer, every single magazine, uh, every single journal or TV news people or military branch or government or even company can have its own designation okay so for example here in the west we are generally using these generations that i told you guys about but if you don't know um Ch the chinese military for example has a completely different uh way to deal with that completely different for example the fourth generation aircraft are the f-22 j-20 su-57 f-35 for example and the third generation are the MiG-29, F-15, F-14. So it's completely different. The second generation would be MiG-21s, 23s, MiG-19s, all in the same box. So that's the official People's Liberation Army designations for generations. Uh, for the Air Force magazine, it is another one. For Aerospace Web is another one. For Air Power Development Center is another one. For Lockheed, uh, for example, they don't consider the Su-57 as a fifth generation aircraft because it's not stealthy enough or the government of the US generally uses that. But th this is contested by Boeing, for example, and Eurofighter. So what is that? Okay, it doesn't make sense, right? Each country, each person has its own way to deal with stuff. So it's just, it doesn't make any sense. It doesn't make any sense to use this in this specific manner. Okay, not trying to rant about it. Uh, I still use, as I said, the generations and all this stuff. But the, the only problem is that it doesn't mean anything. It doesn't mean anything, you know? For example, considering a fifth generation aircraft stealth or not. Stealth is not like that, man. Stealth is not something that you turn on and off on a design. It's completely the opposite, actually. You know, you can put certain aspects of stealth like the MiG-35 for example has a special paints for it or even the J-20 right and the Su-57 but then you have a different designs that are completely made to be stealthy like the F-117 uh, uh, you know and the F-22 and stuff like that so it has a level to it stealth is not something that you turn on and off it's, it depends on the design, it depends on the doctrine of the military that it's being developed for, it depends on the company, it depends on the design bureau, if it's a socialist country, it, design, it, it depends on various amounts of stuff. And that, together with it, each of these persons or institutions using different uh, designations for generations, it makes it an obsolete kind of situation. Of course, uh, here in the West, I am talking in English, obviously, 
uh, we have a socially acceptable, uh, we, we, we kind of socially accept, uh, accepted that we are using the first uh, designation that I told you guys about. So, for example, the fourth generation being the MiG-29s and the 15s, and the third being the MiG-21s and 23s, the fourth plus, stuff like that, you know? These are the more, this is the more socially accepted version of this generation stuff right now. But beyond that, it doesn't matter. It really doesn't. So if you want to say that, uh, uh, so, I don't know, the MiG-25 is a third generation, fine, it doesn't matter. The performance of the aircraft will not change because you are naming it a different thing. The vegan, if you change it from a third to a fourth, it will not be better just because it's a fourth generation aircraft. The aircraft itself is the same. So it doesn't matter, you know? Uh, Su-57 is an example. A lot of people say that the Su-57 is not a fifth generation aircraft because it's not stealthy enough. Whatever that means, you know? But the thing is, the Su-57, man, has its own design, its own performance. If you compare it to, in a, if, you can, if you want to compare it to, compare it to in a real combat that never existed, it's even less materialistic, but try to compare the aircraft by the aircraft, you know? Uh, we didn't have combats between them, so try to use uh, the stats or something like that. But saying that, uh, the, the objective of saying that a Su-57 is, is a fourth generation aircraft and not a fifth generation aircraft, if that means anything, it's to be making the F-22 and the F-35 look better. It's just that, it's just propaganda. So why is that even important? Why you as a person, you, you are not probably an engineer of Lockheed Martin or of Sukhoi or anything like that or even a marketing person there, or probably you're not even part of the government or anything like that. So why would you just spread propaganda of them? You know, this doesn't make any sense in my mind. Uh, but of course, if you want to, you can. Um, as the Americans say, it's a free country, free country. <laughs> and it is just, it really, it's not important. It really doesn't mean anything. Um, I will still use it as a general way to deal with problems such as explaining what aircraft are coming in the future, for example, in a video, or explaining to a guy or a girl, you know, that uh, what type of aircraft uh, Gripen is, for example, or what type of aircraft F-104 is, or what type of aircraft Amic-15 is. You can use these to just have a general way. If you can say that it is a fourth generation aircraft, you can already kind of have a, an idea that it will probably use boost operators. It will already have super maneuverability or close to that. It will start to be using fly-by-wires or very close to fly-by-wire systems. You can have an idea of what, a, what type of aircraft is that, you know? But using it specifically, it's kind of weird because not every aircraft will fit it. And especially not every single person or country or institution or whatever will be using the same system. So I can say that the F-22 is a, a, fourth gener a fourth generation aircraft because it's old. It's from 2005, for example. It's, I know, it's too old, for example. Uh, no, it's too old. Uh, I think it's a fourth generation aircraft because my idea of generations is for ear-based. So after 2015, in my personal generations, uh, it is the fifth generation. So the F-22 is it's a fourth generation. See how that doesn't make sense? It's the same for every single thing because every single one of them is just invented. It doesn't mean anything. But as I said, we have some that are more socially accepted here in the West. And that is the first generation. It is the late 40s or 45, you know, late 40s aircraft, or even 46, 47, you know, uh, second generation would be 47 to like 53, you know, 1953. Uh, we have some stuff going even past that. So in the performance wise, you know, obviously there are exceptions. For example, the G91 was later used and it is technically like a second generation aircraft, but it's still 
uh, it is in, in the time that some of the third generations were being made. So see how that is just weird to compare that, you know? So yeah, we are going, I'm going to use the normal Western stuff that we are normally going to see, but I'm not going to use to say that an aircraft is bad or, or not bad or good or, or whatever, or amazing using generations because that doesn't make any sense. So yeah, just use this. I, I'm just going to use it as a box to have an idea how the aircraft is performing generally, you know, very generally. So yeah. But anyway, this is the video and I hope you enjoyed and let me know in the comments what you think about these ideas. I know they are kind of, you know, far-fetched sometimes uh, because a lot of people take these generations too seriously for some reason. But yeah, anyway, I hope you enjoyed and I see you guys on the next one. Subscribe. Bye guys.